Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another iteration of my Simutrans tutorials. Each time I try to do these tutorials, I try to make them a little bit better and cover something I didn't before and make them more straightforward than the last. So we're going to try this again. Um, I'm going to attempt to show you how to start a game of Simutrans and create your first successful and profitable rail line in the game. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start, I'm going to show you basically what the map looks like, how um, we can plan our first route and the steps that go into making, to creating it and making it profitable. So um, first of all, here is the map that um, I generated. In Simutrans, they don't have pre-generated um, maps. It, it is based off a seed and then um, all the cities are kind of um, randomly placed. So you have to sometimes generate a few maps before you get um, one that's actually like fun and realistic, you know, and playable. Because sometimes the map will just generate, you know, cities like in the middle of like a mountain range, which isn't very realistic. But this one has a nice big city on the edge of a, like a little peninsula. And there's a bay and there's plenty of other big cities around it. So it's somewhat realistic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to this exact map in the description so you don't have to go through all the trouble of uh, generating a map. Um, maybe, you know, we can cover that if, you, if anybody's interested in another video, how to generate a new map. But, so what we're going to do is we have um, our city right here. Let me turn on the uh, names. I'm sorry, this is already off to a not so great start. Um, in Simutrans, you're able to um, turn on and off the labels for buildings, for um, trains for that are called convoys, vehicles, um, stations. So let me turn on the city names. Hmm. You know what? Forget it. But anyway, so um, the middle of the city, it will have a town hall. So we know that our town is called Stony Hatmouth kind of a funny name. Um, and then over here, you know, off the coast, there's this other large city, which is called Missenstock. And these cities are in somewhat close proximity. And this city has um, some of some major attractions like the um, cricket field and the football pitch. Um, and so that makes a good opportunity to um, connect it with a rail line to provide passenger service between the two cities. And they are a good distance apart, even though there's um, a bit of a, we're gonna have to build some bridges, which is gonna be expensive, but we, um, I think it's a good place to start. So we have to like look at our budget. We start off with 320,000 Simutrans points or whatever, Simu dollars. And we have to, you know, of course, spend those wisely. And what we wanna do is we wanna make our first um, rail line um, operable um, using only this budget. So we might we might have a little bit left over by the time we're done, um, as long as we plan it and um, construct it um, efficiently. So when you look at your city, you're going to want to make a central station as close as possible to the city center and somewhat kind of close to some major attractions. And I am going to go ahead and delete a few or... Um, demolish a few uh, buildings in the city to make a rail line. So let's just get at it. I am going to put the station right around here next to the rugby pitch. Oops. Um, so let's go ahead and delete these. We're going to make a straight line. And I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks and maybe some of them are kind of like hacks a little bit. So right here, um, Every building in the city has to be touching a road. And so that makes sense, right? That's one of the rules. So see, we cannot delete this road because there's no other um, uh, place for, there's no other um, tile that this house is connected to that is a road. This is the only one because see, they're touching and we can't delete it. Um, so one thing that we could do is we could delete the two houses and that would allow us to delete this road, but that's kind of expensive. Every time you do, every time you delete a house, you're spending money. So um, what we can do is 
hold control, click and drag one time, click and drag again. And it creates a level crossing even though it's the end of a road. So we'll just do that, click, delete, and see, like this one, we can't, we can't remove the road, um, but we can just destroy the house. And then, oops. Oh, okay, so one thing that we have to um, do is sometimes the game glitches out a little bit. So what we can do is we can just save the game. Because obviously we should be able to delete, to delete this road tile. Um, so we'll just save the game and then load it again. And it does something. I don't know what. And now we can delete the, the road tile. And so if you want to make a straight line, you have to hold control. You have to hold the control key, and then, um, then you can build a straight line. If you just click and drag, it'll, it, gets, it gets kind of um, wonky. Um, now, we're just going to keep building out, and we're going to um, exit the city around this area. And then the, we're going to drag the rail line up here, around here, uh, probably build a bridge there between these two points, or um, yeah, bridge, and then another bridge, and then reach here. So let's keep at it. OK, so we'll just delete there, delete there, delete that, delete this. Now, um, when you have these weird contours in the landscape, it's not, you can see we don't have a direct pathway down. We want to keep the rail line as straight as possible. And since we have a little bit of money to throw around, I'm just going to raise the land right here. It costs 1,000 points, which isn't that much. But in, of course, in the beginning of the game, you should do that as little as possible um, in order to um, save money. I believe it is worth making the rail line you know, longer or um, not as straight um, in some cases in order to save money. But since, mo but since the rest of the landscape is relatively flat um, and we won't need to do much um, terrain editing, uh, it's fine if we just did the, in that one case. Okay, so now let's do a diagonal rail line. We'll just hold control again, and it kind of just follows it. See, if we don't hold control, it'll like, you know, do something weird like that. Um, so just hold control. There. Okay. Okay, so right here, we, since we want to make the rail line as straight as possible, this is the straightest path because we can't go right here, right? Because then we'd have to build a bunch of um, earthworks here to um, keep it straight. So what we can do is just raise the land there, lower it there. Only cost 2,000 rest of the way. Okay, so let's come up here, another diagonal line. And a shout out to everyone who is here from my Instagram page, Cities Illustrated. I love this game so much, and so that's why I want to show you guys how to play it, because it is, in my opinion, it is the most uh, realistic transportation simulator game you can get right now. And it's really great because it's free. Um, and so I guess we'll have to make another video or some other tutorial to show you how to download it. It's not that straightforward, but it's pretty easy. You'll figure it out. All right, okay, so now this is the most diagonal straight path we can get, um, but we've run into some terrain. So, you know, we still have 250,000 points, so one, two, three, four, and now we can drag it past. Okay. Oh, see, see right there? The reason it did that is because I did not hold control, so that sucks. Um, if you want to um, undo a path that you make, um, you can press Z, and it undoes it, but it will not refund your money, which kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. All right. Hold on. Okay, so, yeah, you have to always hold Z, or sorry, control, and you don't take your finger off it too soon, which is what I was doing there. All right. There's that. Okay. Now, how to build... How are we going to build our um, bridge? So um, up here, there is a button called Elevated Way Supports. And we have a variety of different kinds of bridges. The most expensive is the brick arch 
um, uh, viaduct system. And the cheapest one are these wooden ones. Um, and so the brick one can go across the ocean. It, it can only go across um, the, sha the most shallow level of ocean. And you can see the level that you're looking at. So, like, you just hover the mouse over this tile, and then if you look in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, um, it'll show the um, position. It'll show the coordinates of the mouse, of the mouse, of the which tile the mouse is on. And so you can see it says 1612 by 1808. That is the coordinates. And then after that, it says negative 2. And that negative 2 is, indicates what um, level we are on. So... This is level negative two. And then if we move the mouse up here, it says we are on negative uh, level negative one. And then up here, that would be zero. It, get, it just keeps going up. And then like if we go over, sorry to kind of distract from uh, building a rail line, but I just want to show you this real quick. And then if we go over here into the mountains, you can see this is level 26. And if you go down level 19, 18, 17, 16, blah, blah, blah. So that's um, something very useful you're going to want to know, you're going to want to have um, figured out before you start building anything because it really helps you plan if you know how to use the uh, coordinates and, the, and what level you are on. So back to this. The best, um, since we're early in the game, we're going to want to use the cheap um, wooden trestle. So one of these um, is able to be built on the shallowest level of water which is the lightest, the lightest shade of blue. And so um, we will hold control and click on it, and then it will give us a starting height. And we're going to want to click it once and then back so it's two. Even though, it's, even though it starts on two, you have to click it once and back. You have to, you know, you'll figure it out. And I think, yes, okay, so this one's able to be built on the water. So we'll just build like that. And then let's see, how do we want to approach the city? Since we have plenty of money, I think it'd be fun and, you know, good for the video if we just make a direct diagonal line. And so you can do that, of course, by holding control. See, I'm holding control and it'll just make the most direct line um, to the, to the um, tile that the mouse is on. Okay, holding control, releasing the mouse. Okay. So now we have that. And then let's see. So we'll start from here because we want, oops. So now it's because my starting height is still on the, on level two, it starts two, it starts two levels above the tile that my mouse is on. So right here, if I drag it, that's two tiles above. What we can do now is lower it to zero. And now you don't see it because it, is keeping it level, but once we pass on to another, um, to a lower level, you can see it changes into a, into a bridge that is one tile tall. Um, okay, so the way that we can keep it straight is by doing this. See, we'll, we'll start up here, drag, holding control, and that is a direct, um, that is a direct diagonal line. Okay. Releasing. Now let's see. Now before we keep building the bridge, we should plan where we want our station to go on the island. As you can see, it's pretty, there's a lot of stuff on here and we don't want to delete uh, that many buildings because it gives us kind of a penalty for the, when the town wants to grow more. I believe if, it, if there's been lots of buildings deleted before, um, it'll kind of affect how much the town grows after this. But we're going to have to delete some anyways. Um, so I think a good place to start is over in this area. And maybe we can make our um, final station somewhere over here. But let's have the approach be over here because we, we can build a station next to the, uh, the rugby pitch. So I think we're going to have to just delete these buildings. There's some nice buildings here that are getting deleted. But, you know, that's, that's the cost. Okay, we'll drag our mouse. There's our line. All right. Now we'll go back to our wooden trestle so elevated support. If you choose these other ones, I do not believe that they can be built all over the water. I think there's only one wooden um, elevated way that can be built. So I think it's this one. And let's go ahead and 
hold control, click it again, change it to two. Because the bridges that go over open water, they have to be two tiles above it. And this is to allow ships to go um, over them. Okay, so we'll just build that. Now, I know I, I know I kind of already built this over here and they're not lining up, so let's just ignore this. Now, how do we get, so the top of the bridge is level zero and where we want to build our rail line is negative one. So how do we get it from uh, zero to one to negative one? The only way we can do this is going to landscape tools, build artificial slope, there. It costs $3,000 which is kind of expensive, and I think they need to change that, but whatever. Um, and we'll do the same thing over here. So let's make the buildings invisible. Shift, um, quotation mark. It turns the buildings invisible, or somewhat invisible. And now we can see that we have a little bit of a problem right here. So how do we get this bridge up to um, this part? The best way to do it is go to the, the bridge that we're using, change it to zero, Go along here, like that. And then, um, since we already built the rail line here, we can do this, which is another cool trick, build artificial slope, um, which is just a single block higher, and then just click on it, and it changes that track into a slope. And that only works if the track is already there. So now we can build the track like that, Drag the track along. Okay, I guess we're going to have to delete this. All right, now we want to have the track go up a level. So we press U, changes it to the up, um, raise land button. There, okay. Now, is this going to work? Yes. Okay. So I think we're doing pretty well so far. We have lots of money left, 125000 and over here, we'll do the same thing we did earlier. Wooden trestle. Tip, tip, tip. Track, and the track button is T. There. Okay, so here's what we have so far. So now we have the rail line is fully completed. Um, and since we have plenty of money left, let's keep um, building it into the city because the um, the closer the stations are to the larger buildings, the more passengers we will get. Because like um, if you build a station, so we'll, we'll start by building a station right here next to the rugby pitch. We'll use Q, the, le uh, the Q button, letter Q, to delete roads only. And that's pretty useful. So like if we want to delete, to delete this road, we just hit Q and then da -da, double click. Now we're going to use the brick platform with buildings. We'll put one, two, three. Okay, so let me go back into the settings. Uh, display, tooltips, show station names. There we go. Okay, and so it, we've built the station called Nissen Stock Rugby Pitch Railway Station. And so the closer the station is to a building, the more likely passengers are going to use it um, to use the station. And there's two types of passengers, which is really interesting. Um, which is why, you know, I think that this game is the most realistic transportation simulator because there's two types of passengers. The passengers that are commuting to a job, so they will use the station every day. And then there are passengers that are using the station to take a long trip, a trip like, I don't know, to visit their friend or to go to a game. They're not using the station every day. They're only using it every now and then. And so passengers that are commuting will use the station if it is close to their house. So like we built this um, station right next to this very nice big building, um, which has a visitor demand of 420 and a job demand of 160. And so um, this building does not have house people. It is a business. So that so the jobs means that 160 people work here and they will use my station to get to the building if it is close. And since it is very close, I think we'll get lots of uh, visitors. Same with the rugby pitch. It has a visitor demand 114 and jobs of 28. It's actually much less than this big building here, which is interesting. 
Um, and so jobs are commuters and then visitors are people who would use it every so often. Now this white house here is for people. And so it has a population of 50, 50 people live here. Um, and so since 50 people live here and it is right next to the station, you can click on this button called stops potentially within walking distance. It shows there's a, it's only a minute and 40 second walk from the building to the station. That means that people who are commuting are from this building, commuting to other jobs, are very likely to use the station. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Um, sorry if my speech is a little jumbled. I'm not really reading off a script. I'm just kind of going off, you know, what I know, you know, off the top of my head. Um, so we're just going to keep building along here. All right, we'll delete that. Okay, so we want to not delete as many buildings as possible. I think we're going to have to delete this building because we're going to bring the rail line up to here, I think. Maybe we'll make another station right in this blank area. So first we'll raise the land, press U, up. Okay, and now, what are we going to do? Um, shift quotation marks to see the invisible to make the buildings invisible, it makes it a little easier to plan. Now we have an opportunity to build a diagonal path. And the path that we take, you know, we can see that it's all this like bumpy coastal land. But what we can do is we can use the, the wooden um, ways to make it straight or to make it um, buildable. So we'll go like this. We'll have to delete this building and we can go da, 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 da. like so. Okay. Uh, Ta-da. All right. Um, and so um, when we use the quotation marks to make the buildings invisible shift quotation, that's the first level of invisibility. And so that, that hides all the city buildings, but it does not hide attractions. And so like the school, the rugby pitches, soccer, football, whatever, those stadiums are part of the um, attractions category of buildings. And you, you cannot delete them. You can delete city buildings, all these things that are invisible, you can delete them, but you cannot delete these building, the attractions, which I guess makes sense. And then if you hold, if you shift click quotation marks again, it turns everything invisible. And then you click it again, everything is visible. All right, so, we built our track up to here. Now, where do we want it to end? It would be nice if it ended close to the um, other large attraction, the cricket ground. Sorry, I was saying rugby earlier. I mean, what's the difference? So how do we, how can we get the train line over to this area? Um, okay, so one thing that um, I like to do is um, it's pretty easy to delete roads and use the use their empty footprint to make a path for the train. So I'll, I'll do that right there. We'll delete this house. Okay, I'll have to delete this house, this house. Duh, 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 duh. Okay, I think that is gonna be a fairly straight line. Okay, yeah, that's good. And we'll just have to delete these two road tiles. Okay, and now we can just control drag. Oops. There. Okay. Have it come down over there. Now let's see. Maybe we can, um, we'll delete these houses. That one right there. Now maybe what we can do is we can have the, the railroad end right here and we can queue. Okay. So here's another kind of like cheat, like hack type thing. Um, Because um, the road tiles, if, if you're able to delete them, it's kind of finicky when it comes to attractions because um, any tile, any road tile that is next to attraction to an attraction cannot be deleted. But what you can do is you can build your own road and it and there's no indicator that you own the road, but it is oops, sorry, but it is yours. Press the S key to build a road. So this road tile right here is ours. This one belongs to the city but we can delete the cities, then we can delete ours. 
And there, now we have a footprint for our station. So um, we'll delete this building, this building. Okay. And the reason I wanted it to be right next to the rugby pitch is because we want as many people using the station as possible. And if it, and like I said earlier, the closer it is to a major attraction, the more people will use the station. Okay, so right now we have room for three stations. I think we'll build another station right there. And it's cool, when you build the station, it already gives you a name. So this is Missenstock High Street Railway Station. And right here, duh, 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 Missenstock Cricket Ground Railway Station. And I'm making all of my stations three tiles long. So now we have three tiles in this city, which is pretty great. Okay, so let's go back to the main city. Oh, we've used quite a bit of our budget, 66,000. Um, you know, um, I definitely should have started the video by telling you to build your train depot first because the train depot costs a bit of money. So we'll build it right. Well, so what we want to do is we also want to think about what other cities we want the train um, want to serve because we only want to use one depot. So maybe the next train line we will build will be to this city, Bport. Cute name. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to make the depot um, kind of central. So I think the other, I think when we build the line to Bport, we will have the train line branch off like right here. So that, so I think the a great place to build the depot would be like right here. And the reason we're going to do that is um, because we're going to be using a special type of um, signaling because there's all. Um, oh, wait, I forgot. I don't need. I didn't need to do that. I'm so sorry. Um, now we have um, signals. And we're going to start off with this type of signal called the token block signal. And the token block signal just means like when the train passes it, um, it can go anywhere on the train line. And that's and we're only using it because right now we're only going to have one train on the line. We don't need to worry about having another train for a bit. So the, the depot, which you need to build trains, costs 26,000 points, which is quite a bit because we're going to be using the... Steam Depot at first. Um, so let's buy a train. The maximum, so some of these trains, you, you click on the depot, you go to locomotives, and you need a locomotive first. So some of these are green, and some of them are green and yellow. The green and green and yellow doesn't really matter right now, um, but some of them are grayed out. Some of them, you, it says too heavy. And that's because when we click on the track, it'll tell us maximum axle load is 17 tons. And that means we can only buy a train that is that um, the axle load is equal to or less than 17 tons. Um, this one is 20 tons, which we cannot use. This one is 18 tons, and it will let us buy it, but that's because it is like one ton over, but it will run very slowly on the line. So we want to pick a train, a locomotive, that is 17 tons or less on the axle load. So, and we also want to look at the power of the locomotive. Um, and so the power, I can't really highlight it with my mouse, but if you look at all those weird numbers, um, below, those are the stats. It says max speed 143. That's important to think about right for a little bit right now. It's not the most important thing because our train line is not very long, and because it's a steam locomotive, it takes it a long. It takes the train a long time to reach its maximum speed. So that's something we can kind of disregard for now. The only thing we want to really look at is axle load and power, which is at the bottom. So at the at the bottom, it says the power is 363 kilowatts. Um, which is uh, one of the more powerful steam locomotives. And the faster a train leaves, because we have, right now we're gonna have like th six or so stations. And so each time the train stops and starts at the station, it takes it a while to get moving again. So the more powerful the train, the faster it will start moving. 
So let's just pick this one just for the sake of to keep the video moving along. I, there's so many different choices. It doesn't really matter that much as long as the axle load is less than the, than the track, equal to or less than the track, and the power. There's all these other factors you can maybe consider, but I'm not going to worry about them right now. Okay, and then we'll go to passenger carriages, and let's just pick um, this one, the orange ones. So we'll just click that, and then it turn, and then it becomes um, the subcategory of that rail line of that train company. So it says GNR, which is like that's a rail company in Britain, Great Northern Railway, maybe. Um, we'll just pick. We'll just get uh, three cars. That's enough, and it says that we have. Um, the train, the entire capacity of the train is 180 passengers, and then overcrowded capacity is 90. So there's 180 seats, and then there's 90 places for people to stand. And that's important because um, if a train is con consistently over capacity, um, people will not want to ride it, and if it's, and they will not want to ride it for very long. It's okay if it's over capacity, if it's like short, um, like metro trips, like inner, like. Um, not intercity, but in the city, trips within the city. If it's if someone has to stand for a trip within the city, that's fine. But people will not want to ride your train if it's consistently over capacity. That's not something we really have to worry about right now. I don't think we'll be over capacity for quite a while. Um, so we'll just start with this. We have a train, we have three cars. It says station tiles three, and we have three station tiles at all our stations. Um, let's go back here. Let's make sure to build our station for this town. Railway tools. Brick platform with building. One, two, three. That's our downtown station. And let's maybe put, you know, we have a lot of area in here that we can maybe put another station. And so where should that go? Hmm. I think that we could put another station right here. One, two, three. I think that looks good. Because if we could put three stations and we might get more passengers, but it would be the train has to stop even more and it might take a longer time. And, pe and the people that want to ride your train, they do take that into consideration, of course. Like I said, this is the most realistic transportation simulator. They will look, the people that want to take your train, the, simu the simulation people, they will consider how long the average trip is between the two points. So the less stations we have, the better, but we will be potentially losing out on more passengers. But since this area here is kind of a low density um, residential area, like these buildings only have a population of 18, which isn't you know negligible, um, but it still is not a ton because like here in the downtown core, these buildings have like 48 and it's close to attractions. So, like, if there was an attraction over here, of course, I would want to build another station. Okay, so now we're going to make the schedule of the train, which is going to be very simple for now. It can get very complicated later if we want it to. But since this is our first rail line, we will click Schedule, Add Stop, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since the train is just going to be traveling along this back and forth, back and forth, and there's only one station, sorry, sorry, then there's only one station tile on the line. There's only one line of tiles um, because we can make very complicated stations later in the game. Um, once we get more passengers and other services running, we can make very complicated, cool stations. But since right now it's just a single line the whole way, we'll just do, we'll go back to our station, our schedule, and we will click mirror schedule and then that's it then promote to line and then this thing pops up you can just click you can just click the exit button and now it is our first line line one see serves line line one. Oh, and and the train the um, the first um, box became blue because now this train this locomotive is no longer for sale because the year just changed, it changed, or the month just changed, um, and now the train is technically obsolete, which we don't really have to worry about right now. It's still a perfectly good train, but it is gonna. But if your vehicles are obsolete, that is of course going to be something to consider much later in the game. So schedule. 
Oh wait, I already did that. Okay, so let's go back here. I think we are all ready to go. So let's press start. And there's our train. Okay, so let's click on it. And let's follow it. And um, since it's very early in the game, it's going to take a while to start making money. So what you can do is you is that is on your keyboard. There's the greater than and less than um, keyboard signs or um, math symbols or whatever. So what you can do is you can hold down the um, the one on the right. Is that the greater than sign or the less than sign? I don't know. I forget. What is it? The alligator eats the smaller number. Um, but hold down the one on the right, and it speeds up time. You can also do this, the, the, you can also press fast forward, but see, it gets all like jumpy, which isn't really great. It's kind of weird, but if you, but if you hold down the greater than sign, the one on the right, just hold it down, and over here in the corner, you will notice that the time is speeding up. The date is the, see, it's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Um, that is speeding up time. And see, as you can see, the train's getting really, is getting faster. Okay, so we're already doing pretty well. We're, we have 59 passengers on board, 83. We're already making money. Great, we're already profitable. So we'll just, we'll, let's just follow it back and forth a little bit. Sorry if it gets a little, if you're getting sick watching this, getting a little motion sickness, but. And you can speed it up uh, much more. You can speed it up to like 100 or even 150 if your computer um, can handle that uh, kind of processing. Um, and you might have to do that if you're not, if you're making very little money and you want to continue playing the game, you just need to make more money, just speed up time. So yeah, 116 people on board, that's great. Now, one thing we can look at is, look at, the, look at how fast the train is going. That is in the upper um, left-hand corner um, when you're looking at a train. So right, so in this section, we are maxing out because the track that we used, the cheapest track, it maxes out at 90 kilometers an hour. And then we can buy even better track, which maxes at 155, which is much faster. So let's just upgrade the track and our train will go faster because our train has a maximum speed of 143 kilometers an hour. So we'll upgrade, we upgraded the track here. All you do is just just act like you're building another track on top of it. And the upgrade cost is much cheaper than a brand new track, of course. It's, you're just upgrading the track. It only costs 1,500, which is totally worth it. We'll just go there, go there. Okay, come down here. Drag it over the bridge. And this is going to make our train go much faster, which is going to make us even more money because it's hauling more passengers per, um, you know, period of time. And we don't have to upgrade the track right now between these two stations because the train does not reach its maximum speed between the two stations. You only want to upgrade it where the train is reaching its maximum speed. So see, now it's going much faster, which is great. Making lots more money. I kind of and and see right here now my um, money, my budget, my balance is in the negative, and you're allowed to go negative. You're borrowing money from the bank, but when you go negative, it's not like some other tycoon games where you like have like a button that says like borrow money, and you can borrow like a hundred thousand dollars. No, you just spend money, and if you're and if you have an available um, balance. Uh, an available belt, negative balance from the bank, a line of credit, then it will just go negative. And you're going to want to use that line of credit. It's very useful when you, if you want to build more um, things faster. Um, what you can, and you could also just like speed up time by a lot. You just speed up time and then you're, um, you'd be making more money and it would just make money and then eventually, you know, you will go uh, positive again, and um, you know. But let's pretend that we don't want to wait. So let's just um, we'll start on our next project in just a second. So let's watch the train. Let's see how it's doing. So let's click on line management. You're going to use this button a lot. Line management, and it shows all of our rail lines. And we only have one rail line so far. Line one. Click on it. 
Let's just follow the train. Let's just watch it go back and forth. It's reaching its maximum speed. It's going to hit the three stations here. And now, here, sorry, let me... What should I do? Um, look at the speed. So sometimes when it hits some of these corners, it's going so fast that these corners, like this one right here, it's right here, when it approaches this turn, it's going about 140 kilometers an hour. But see how tight this turn is? It has to slow down for this. So one thing that we could do is um, in the future is we could delete this land. We could lower the land right here and make it a more direct turn. Um, and that would allow the train to maintain its high speed, which is something, you know, of course it would, you know, make more money. It would make the train faster. But we don't want to worry about that right now. That's going to be pretty expensive. That's a big project for later. So what can what else can we do to make more money? Here, just a second. Sorry, I don't I am not really good at editing videos, so or I just don't know really how to with um, OBS Studio, so I'm just not gonna even bother. I'm just gonna try and do this whole thing in one take. And if it's not up to your standards, I apologize. But how can we, we have tons of the city over here. We have a large part of the city that is not connected to our rail line. Like these, like this um, building right here, This these houses, there's 50 people there and they're, um, they will not use our station very much because it is so far away. They have to walk. That is such a and it's such a long distance. So if we click on this one, stops potentially within walking distance. No, oh, no passenger service. There are no there is no um, there's not there's no transportation options within walking distance of this house. But for this one, I think I think they can walk to our station. Okay. So we click on stops with potentially within walking distance. But our nearest, the nearest station to them, this one, Stony Hatmouth Square, is 1.6 kilometers away, and it's going to take the person walking 24 minutes. So they're not, they are not going to want to use this for commuting. They might use this now and then if they want to go visit the um, football game in the other city, on the island city we just were looking at, but they won't use it for commuting to, like maybe they have a job in the other city. Um, so what we can do is we can build some um, inner city um, transportation options, transportation options within the city. And we can do that um, with the cheapest option right now, which is the tramway. There's also a way to build a subway, which um, is really cool, but we um, that's very expensive and we do not want to invest that kind of money right now. It's not uh, prof It would not be profitable right now, definitely. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to build a tram system within the city. So what we wanna do is let's just say we wanna connect this upper uh, uh, residential area to our downtown station. So one way, so the tramway, the trams work just like the trains. It's just, it's just a track um, and a tram, a tram train runs on it. So for this, for our main um, rail system, our first line, it's a single track, which means only one train can run on it. But for a tram, much, many more people are going to use it. And so we want to have a double track. But only one track can be built on a road tile. So what we can do is something like this. Now this is not really realistic because in lots of like tram systems in the world, the um, the road is wide enough to build this to build a double track tram. Uh, but since in Simutrans, all the tiles, all the road tiles are only um, able to have one track on at a time right now. Um, that's just going to be the way it is. So it's going to be the trains go this way, the trams go up this way, trams go down this way. Um, and so let's also keep 
keep an eye on our budget. We are negative $3,000 in the hole right now. So let's look at our finances and let's click right here, credit limit. Oh, we don't even have, um, click on months. Okay, so right now we have a credit limit of negative 37,000 uh, points. And that's great, that's a lot of money. And see, it keeps going, they keep giving us more and more credit every month. So um, as long as we keep making money, they're gonna keep extending our line of credit because our profit margin right here is, whoa, 70% profit margin, that is great. They're gonna loan us a lot of money probably, maybe up to like 100,000 um, credits. And what we want, and we, but we have to be very careful about what we use these credits for. Everything you use the credits for, it has to be making money and it has to make money within, um, before the next month is over. So like right now, um, we have, um, negative, uh, a, a credit line of 37,000 points. If we want to, if we use all of that right now, we have to use it before the month ends and it ha or we have to make it, um, operating, operating before the month ends. Like if we were to build a new train line, we have to build a new train line. We have to get a train running on it. It has to be making money before the line, before the month ends. It's not like we can just build half of it right now and expect the bank to give us more money, um, that on the next month, if they're, and they will not do that. They will not give us more money if there's no service operating. It will just show up to them like we just spent a lot of money and we are not making more money because of it. We just spent money with nothing to show for it. That's the logic of the game. Anyways, I know it's different in real life, obviously. Um, so, but we, let's see, how can we connect our tram line to the station? Um, we want to have a double track as much as possible so let's delete these two buildings and let's build a road, okay? Um, tram trains can also run on railroad track, which is pretty cool, but we'll just keep it to the tram line, to tram tracks right now. I, I hope you're able to see how visible the tram line is. I know it's kind of gray on gray, but, um, you know. Um, okay, so we... And I'll show you something else cool. We have a station right there. How do we get, um, and we'll build a station right here. Now there's two ways to do this. We can just build the station right there and it shows up as a different station. Um, and in many other transportation simulators, it's just two separate stations. But in Simutrans, people will walk from one station to the other if it means that they can get a better um, transit option. So people will come around the bend, come around the track, stop here, but and the people on the, tr on the tram will know that they can just walk over to the main railroad station, which I think is really cool. Um, another option is to, let's delete this. We'll build a station right there, and we'll build a station right here, because the station will, the, station will continue expanding as the same station as long as the as long as more tiles being added to it are touching it diagonally or uh, whatever the other word is that's not diagonal perpendicular so like right here right here right here anything built like directly touching the station diagonally or otherwise will become part of that station but um, so let's just keep it like that right now. Um, I don't know when I'm talking about one subject too much, um, so just bear with me. I'm trying to make this video as thorough and as condensed as possible. So um, now, let's see. So we're $7,000 in the hole. That's, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. The tram tracks do not cost very much money to build. Um, Let's see. I think that we want to build our um, tram tracks up here. This this area is great because there's two parallel um, roads. That's really great. So like this. But then there's not two parallel roads connecting these two places. So one thing we could do is we could delete these two buildings um, and build a road like we did earlier. But I will show you a cool trick. How do we make the trams... Um, 
use a single um, line, a single line. And we'll do that with signals. So we'll go to Railway Tools, Mechanical Signal Box. Let's place it as close to our junction as possible. And now, um, when we place the, the signal box on our Railway Tools box, um, these signals will pop up. And we're going to use this one, with just the stop signal. Don't really pay attention to these other ones, except the one we used earlier. That one's important. So let's just use the stop signal. And we'll put a stop signal here, and we'll put a stop signal here. Because the trains are going to be traveling this way. I'm using, like, the North American road system, where we drive on the left. Or do we drive on the right? I don't know. I haven't been to America in a while. Um, but we're going to be um, just saying that they drive this way. They're going to be going up on this side. And we'll use the one-way sign. These are very important. So we want the white side. The, the train can pass on the white side. And if we click it again, it becomes red. See? Red. We do not. And it's a one-way sign. And red means do not pass. So we'll change it to, then we just click it again, and it converts to the other side. It's white. So that means on the other side of the tram track, we want the red to be facing. We want to be looking at red, because that means that the trains will go around this corner, and they will go this way, and they will see white, which means they're good to go. And they will obey that one-way sign all the way until here. They go around this loop. They'll go back up. And we'll do the same thing on our next set over here. They're going to go this way, like that. And they will not go down this track. They obey the signs. OK. Ooh, OK, so we are 19,000 bucks down. That's OK. We have a pretty good thing going on. Let's keep building our tram tracks. OK. Now, I'll show you the last cool feature of the trams. Now we're just going to make a single line. And this single line, um, one thing that we can do is we could make another thing right here um, and just make it another loop at the end. Um, but we can save money by just making a single line. And it will also help space our trams. So the trams will come up this way. They will, they will go down this track. If it's clear, if there's, not, if there's not another tram on this track, they will just wait right here. Or no, they won't wait right here. They will continue on, and then they will stop at the end, and then turn around and come back and go down the, this side. So I'll use the signals again to, dem to reiterate my point. But it can go this way. It has to go this way. It has to go this way. It has to turn around and come down. Now, how do we make sure that the train or the trams um, stay on this single track and they do not run into each other? How do we make sure that only one tram is allowed on this track at a time? Well, of course, use the signal box again. And so if we only have one station, if we only have, like, say, let's make this the end. This is the last stop on the tram line. Stony Hatmouth Bridge stop. Right next to these um, Victorian houses, which um, have a visitor demand of 170. Very good. These are like um, a beer house. It's like a bar. So lots of people are going to want to go there. Um, but how do we make sure that... Oh no, so, so I was saying, like if we only have one um, station at the end of the line, then we can just use... Um, we click on this, Railway Tools. We can, we can use the stop signal if we, if we only have one station at the end of the line. We just build the stop signal right there. I'm not going to build it, though, because oops, I did build it. Don't do that. It's expensive to, to build it and then erase it. It's very expensive. Um, I'm wasting money here. But we want to have maybe some more stops because we want to serve these other buildings. And the, and the way that I like to organize the tram lines is one stop every five or so tiles. Because in the game, um, four tiles, no, eight tiles, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight tiles is one kilometer. 
Um, I know that might not really look to scale, but that's just the way that it's set up. So it for the timing and the distance, you know, the game is going off eight tiles is about one kilometer. And people really only want to walk. They will only use your train line, tram line, bus line, if they can walk to it. They will commute with it if they can walk to it within 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes or less. Let's say 15 minutes is about maximum. I think that's what I read um, from the one of the main like um, game creators, the guy who works on it a lot. Um, I think he said it was about 15 minutes. So we want the tram lines to be spaced out about every five, four blocks because that makes it um, close to the, um, because like um, if we build a train, uh, a station here, then this person, then the people um, down here are more likely to visit this shop because there's a tram line, a tram station very close to it. Um, so let's just have let's have two stations on the end segment of this line, and let's put a station here and a station here. This will be a connected station for with two tracks, um, and then let's space the other stations about one, uh, about every five or so tiles. So let's just count one, two, three, four, five. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. 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 And it's good that we have a, st a stop like right here before it gets to the single track section. It's good to have something like that. And then, uh, um, and then over here, we'll put a stop there. Over here, stop there. Because we can't, unfortunately, we can't build stops on the slopes. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And if 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 we're getting into like a dense um, downtown area, it's fine to put the stations like closer together. Um, so this one's only going to be three um, blocks away. I would like to put it here, but that's a slope, and we can change it to be flat, but that's expensive, and we don't we want to spend as little money as possible in this um, part of our game. Okay, and then let's put a station there. Let's definitely put a station here. We want it to be as close to the football ground as possible. Um, so let's click on the football ground. Stops within death, well, within walking distance. Oh, it's it's gonna take 13 minutes from people to walk from this station to the football ground. Probably because um, the entrance to this to the football ground is this tile, one or two of these tiles. But this is as close as we can get. We can make it a little closer by deleting this building and then building a wooden station building. I wouldn't really recommend doing this right now, but I'm just showing it just for, just, you know, because when we go to stops within, it has made it closer. It's made it like two minutes walking closer. So that's just a little bit of a uh, tip. All right, let's build, let's keep building. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Let's put it right here. That way it's kind of in the middle of this one and this one. Okay, so I think we have all of our station. Oh, no, we still want to put some more over here. Let's put a station there. And there. Okay, that looks good. Now, um... Let's see. So we're done doing that. Let's see what our line of credit is. We'll go to finances. Okay, so we're still, the month has not passed yet because I slowed, I slowed down time a lot to, um, to build the tram line. Our credit limit is still 37,000. So let's speed up time. Let's speed it up a lot. And um, so this is, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is like my fifth, you know, tutorial attempt. Each time I do one of these tutorials, I try to make it a little bit better. I think this one's been pretty good so far. Um, you can definitely look at my other videos and 
uh, watch those because they're very, they are informative. They're kind of uh, on the lower end of the quality um, spectrum. Um, you know, I'm not really, I don't really like making YouTube videos that much. It's kind of hard um, with the editing and all. Um, but there is lots of other information. Some of it is information I've already shared in this, and some of it is other like tips and tricks that are that just came to me while I was making the video. Um, because I I play this game a ton. I know a lot about this game. I, I know a lot about how it works. This is like my favorite game of all time. I've been playing this game for years. Uh, love it so much. Um, shout out to the team that uh, works on it when they have the chance, because like it is. Um, uh, open source, you know, no one's really making any money by um, adding features and such to it. They should be making money. Um, I would help them if I knew about, you know, how to code and stuff, but don't. Um, so right here, let's make... Um, oh, wait, wait, we were going to wait for the month to change. Okay, so the month did just change. It went from uh, October to November, which means the bank has updated our line of credit. And let's see how much money they gave us. Whoa, like I said, even more, 98,000. They're gonna let us borrow up to $98,000. That is so great. Um, so let's um, build our tram depot. And we're gonna build it, where should we build it? Okay, sorry if I keep jumping around. Um, the signal for this for this part. Okay, so if we want our um, oh my god, I totally just uh, just disregarded what I was talking about earlier. To and got distracted. So we have two stations on this line, and so if the signal we have to choose, it's not going to be the stop signal. The stop signal will not work here because once the train stops at this station and continues on, um, it is this section is going to become free with the stop signal, and it will let another train on, and they will run into each other. So we have to use the token block signal and we'll drag it this way. You drag in the direction you want the signal to be facing, just like with the signs, the one-way signs, because the trains are going to come up here. They're going to see the signal and they're going to stop. And when it's, and when the signal's green, they'll go. And the token block means only one train will be allowed on the whole section of line at a time. And that's good because it's only one section. So now trains will not bump into each other with the token block signal color. It is the, it is the signal next to like a, um, a mailbox looking thing, which is some thing from history. It's, a, it's called a token block because they, the trains would pass the, the box and they would pick up literally a token, like a coin or like a uh, something, like a necklace or I don't know, whatever. And that means if you and if you're holding the token, that means you are in theory the only one that is allowed to go on to that scene onto the um, track in front of you. So if you have the token, in theory, that means the whole track is clear because only the person with the token can go on the track. So as long as everyone is following the rules, there will not be any collisions. And there are no collisions in the game. I mean, trains do run to each other, run into each other, but if they run into each other, they don't like catastrophically explode. So that's fine. Unlike in uh, Transportation Tycoon, which if you make a mistake, you will lose a train and then you could lose like your whole company, which is a, a pretty interesting mechanic. Um, so um, we built the token block signal and now we need to tell the trains where the token block signal ends. And so we will use this um, uh, sign called end of signaling. It's just a sign that says the signal ends here. And we'll just drag it from here down because it, we don't, that's the direction. And so when trains come around, they'll go up the track, they'll come back down. They have to go this way because of the one-way sign. And then they will see the sign that says signaling ends here. And that will make this, that will make the token block free. And then the next tram can go up. Okay, so that is all good so far. So let's build, let's actually build our um, uh, depot. So we need a plate, we need a flat piece of flat ground to build. So we'll just delete that tile right there. This building can stay there because this, it's still connected to the road diagonally. We'll go up to the tramways tools. And again, we're going to want to build more trams in the future because we still have lots of areas of the city that do not have a connection to the trams. 
So we'll just, we kind of want the tram depot to be in a central area. So we'll, here's a good spot for it. Um, we don't want to put it at the end of the token signal line because that's going to create issues. We want it to be connected to just the regular part. And um, that's all good. And we will build our uh, depot. And the depot, um, tram depot electric, is only 12,000 points. It's not, you know, it's a bit less than the steam. Because in theory, it's easier to build the electric locomotives than the steam locomotives. They they're, they weigh a lot less. They use less parts, I guess. With the steam, I guess you're building like a huge, you know, thing that has a fire burning on the inside instead of an electric motor thing. Okay, so we have that. And now we have to build the tramway catenary lines. Catenary line. I think I'm saying it right. Catenary. Okay, and we just want to, um, we have to start it being built on the depot. And it kind of just is like, just drag it, just drag it around, just make sure all parts of the track have the, the line, the catenary um, electric built over it. You can click in one place and then click on the end and click on another part of the line. And it'll just build the um, overhead wires between the two points. Okay, everything, everything's good so far. Okay, let's click on our um, depot. Every part of the track has overhead lines now, so now we can actually build the, the trams. Okay, so we open the depot, um, and we have a uh, we have six different trams we can build. They're all kind of the same. We want to look at the maintenance cost. That is very that is a very important thing to consider. Um, not so much now, but definitely later in the game, um, when it gets into like the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, you definitely want to be looking at the maintenance cost. Um, so we'll choose this high capacity tram, um, uh, this one, the third from the right. It has, it can hold um, 74 passengers with seven people standing. That's, that's a lot of people, 74 passengers. Um, it has a max speed of 32 kilometers an hour. That's good. Um, and it has the lowest maintenance cost, which is 27 cents per kilometer. This one to the right, it has a maintenance cost of 36 cents, which is quite a bit more. doesn't really make sense what the difference is between these two. Um, but this one has a lower maintenance cost. So let's click it. When we click it, we buy it. We'll go to schedule. And, let's, and to make it easy for us, let's start the schedule from the bottom. This is the from the bottom of the line. We, we want to start it from the top of the line or the bottom of the line. That's going to make it much easier for us to make the line longer in the future if we want to. <clears throat> so there's line, there's the um, beginning. Two, oh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's just the number of the stops. And so we're just going in the direction that we want the, the tram to go. After ten, it'll this will be the eleventh from the last station. And then because it's a um it's a two track system, we're gonna um go back down. So that's this is the last station, so then thirteen. And we just go back down in the direction that we, that we want the trains to travel. Because the order list is just literally instru instructions. After station one, go to station two. After that, three, four, five. It's, you literally just place them in the direction you want the train to go. So after 17, come around up here. 19, 20, 21. Okay, and then we get to the bottom. And there's our last station. And that means we're just done. So it goes one. It goes all the way to 22, and after 22, it goes back to 1. just starts over. Do not click mirror schedule. You only want to click mirror schedule if it's a single line, if it's a single um, uh, line that the trains are going on. It really will, yeah, I won't get, in, I won't get into that right now. Um, maybe we can later, the difference between the mirror and the thing. But since we have a two-track system, we just want to just literally just do what I did here. Okay, so we're done. Promote to line. It becomes line 2. Now we go to schedule. Um, oh wait, no, we don't have to go to schedule. Okay, so that's all done. 
Now we want to have um, more than one train on the line, so we'll just go to copy convoy. We'll hit that like, let's hit it like eight times. That's probably more than we need, um, but because I don't really know exactly how many trains are going to be running on the line because the, um, the number of trains that run per hour is dictated by this section of line. Of course, because only one train can be on this line at a time. And so the time it takes from the train to go from this station up, up to the last station and back is, the, is how long the trams will be spaced apart. I'll show you what I mean. So schedule, they're going to start, the trams are going to start at station one. So oh wait, let's make it a little slower to make it easier to follow. Okay, so I released three trams. They all go from the, from the depot straight to here. If I did not have the one-way signals, they might go this way, which would be bad. That would create some issues. So make sure the one-way signals are, you're always using them for um, any, um, they're very important. They're very important. <laughs> okay, so I, I released three trams. Is that an, let's see, let's, let's release another two. I think that's going to be the maximum is five trams. Let's see. Okay. So we'll go to our end section. The tram goes up, goes to the end, comes back down passes the end of signal section, end of signal sign, and then it allows the next tram to go. Cool, right? Then here's our other two. Let's speed it up a little bit. And what we do not want to have is a tram waiting here. We want the we want the tram one tram to pass this right as the other one is arriving. So I think right now we have one too many trams. Or or maybe not. Let's see. Huh. No, I think we do. It's kind of close, but let's... You know what? Maybe people are fine waiting a little bit. Let's not bother with that right now. If we wanted to get rid of a tram, um, what we would do is we would just pick... Pick a tram. We can we can click on it. Um, when you're clicking on a tile, like if you want to select a vehicle, you can click on it from the map. All you do is you just have to click on it. Um, but first, it'll bring up the stop information, and then after that, if you click it again, it'll bring up the vehicle information. Um, so, if we wanted to get rid of a tram, we select a tram. We go to details. Maintenance, um, sell now. Um, and it just sells the vehicle immediately. It just deletes it off the map. It, and then if you click withdraw, the vehicle um, completes its orders and then does not pick up more passengers and then um, sells it and then um, uh, just disappears. And then there's also go to depot where... If you click it, the tram will immediately stop its orders and go to the nearest depot. And it might, what might happen is it might go onto a section of track that you don't want it to because if you click go to depot, suddenly its order is to go to the nearest depot and it will do anything, it will find the shortest way to get there. Um, so use that with care. I like to, if I want to get rid of a vehicle, I just like to do the sell now. Um, oh, I should also add, make sure you're saving the game a lot. Because sometimes if you just do something random, the game will crash. It used to do with the Simitrans used to do that a lot more. It's been doing that less and less now. They've been working out the bugs, of course. Um, but when they push new versions, sometimes it just creates bugs that you know no one you know no one can even like you know you know it's programming. You know bugs just like for some reason it's doing this now. You know, so just make sure you're saving the game a lot. Okay, so now our tram line is operating fine. And it's bringing lots of people um, to our downtown station and it's making more and more, um, it's making more and more passengers for the main rail line, which is gonna be the main source of income. So let's look at our, um, our tram line. Um, the, the trams that are in white, those are trams that are still in the depot. So let's just go ahead and sell those. 
And we can see uh, the, we have five trams running right now, and the green bar indicates how full the train is. And we can click follow me, and it just follows the tram. We can see that how many passengers it has and the percentage. So as it gets towards the end of the line, um, it's picking up a couple passengers, not very many. But as it works its way downtown, it's picking up more and more passengers, and then it drops off those passengers at the station, then it goes back around and picks up more passengers. And it's okay for to have two lines and two separate stations because the people in the houses will use the station that is most direct to the destination they want to go. So, like, pretend that the people in um, this house... Maybe they, if they want to go downtown to use the main railway station, they will walk over here to Stony Hartmouth Central, and they will get on a tram and go down. But if they want to go visit their friend up in this part of the city, they will walk to the other station, because that is the station that goes uptown. So that's pretty cool, right? It's very realistic. Okay. Okay. Um, I can't really think of anything else I want to cover right now. Um, we're making money. Um, I'm thinking that uh, I will try to do like a, a live uh, stream of the game. And maybe we can like, you guys can ask questions and I will try to answer them. I can, I can definitely answer any question. Probably. So um, just stay tuned on the Instagram account. I'll be announcing when I'm going to do the live stream. And yeah, I hope you join me because uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And I really want more people to be playing this game because if you like trains, if you like transit, you have to know how to play this game. It is so much fun once you get the hang of it because you can build just very complex networks. You can build giant regional systems. You can build high-speed rail systems. You can build ferries, airports, metro, underground metros, U-bonds, any kind of any kind of rail system that exists in the world today, you can build it in semi-transit. There's also maglev trains. Um, in 2000, 2020, um, the maglev will become available. Those are trains that'll go like 500 kilometers an hour. It is so it is so cool. Like once you get a really big network going, it, this game is so awesome. And so I just really want to share um, the awesomeness with all of my fellow transit fans out there. So. Thank you very much for watching. If you did manage to, you know, get through that whole ramble, rambling tirade of mine. Um, and I hope you will join me if I do a live stream. So thank you very much and goodbye.